Welcome back. I want to conclude chapter five by looking at a couple of aspects on Jesus. Firstly, we see how John was weeping because there was no one worthy to open the scroll. And one of the elders comes to him and says, don't weep because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered. And right at that moment, we are seeing Jesus as the conquering king, as the victorious, as the strong, as the bold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is triumphant. And that talks to us about how he has been raised up in triumph from the dead. He's been raised up from victory over death and hell. And as we read on, John sees a lamb. And how does John express this lamb? He says, between the throne and the four living creatures among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though, now notice this, as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent to the earth. The, the next expression of Jesus is shown to us through the symbolism of a lamb. And this lamb, John says, as though he had been slain. Notice that. And he had seven horns and seven eyes. Now, I want to highlight to you that we are talking in symbolism here that we are reading into the symbolism and I don't think John was able to describe how Jesus looked in a total hundred percent sense perfect sense but he gives us that symbolism to understand the way that Jesus functioned in those moments so the seven horns are a picture of perfect authority and power. Remember number seven is perfection. So he has the perfect authority. He has the perfect power. That's why Jesus said, all authority is given unto me when he commissioned the disciples to go into all the world. And the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God, which is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is in the fullness of the Holy Spirit with perfect authority and power. Now, John very correctly says he saw the lamb as though it was slain. Now, what does that mean? What that means is that he saw the marks of sacrifice. That's right, the marks of sacrifice that Jesus was carrying even though he is in heaven right now. Those are the marks of his hands, the nail marks, the nail pierced hands. Remember in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 27, you know, he told Thomas, he said, put your finger here, see my hands. You know, he says, put out your hand, you know, on my side. He said, don't, don't disbelieve, but believe. And when John touched him, he said, my Lord and my God. See, Jesus seems to be carrying the marks of his woundedness on the cross of Calvary for eternity. Right in heaven, he is displaying those marks. Now, he's not displaying them to feel sorry for himself. He's not displaying those marks to get any sympathy. But those are the trophies of his love for his people for the people that he has redeemed. Those are the trophies of victory. The next picture that we see is in verse seven, when the lamb goes to the throne and takes the scroll from the right hand of God the Father. I want you to understand this. Jesus is, is in the midst of the throne, not as the Lion of Judah in this moment, 
but as the lamb who was slain, as the lamb who redeemed the people of God, as the lamb who shed his blood for you and me. Now, you may ask, why is that important? Because he is worthy to break the scroll because he became the lamb of God. Because he became the lamb of God and he was victorious as the lion of Judah. And therefore, that is why the angel is saying, worthy are you even to open the scroll because you were victorious and you redeemed the people of God. It is very important to understand that in this moment of opening the seal and taking the seal into his hand, he stepped in and he moved as the Lamb of God, as the sacrificial Lamb of God who had given his life for humanity. And as he brings that scroll, the 24 elders bow down and worship him. The four living creatures, you know, begin to sing and they sing a new song. There's a new song that has been sung in heaven, a song that had never been sung before. Why? Because he had not redeemed the people before. They continue to worship and see the entire heaven is worshiping the Lord. Entire heaven is worshiping him. There are millions of angels lifting up their voices. They are rejoicing. There is victory. There is celebration because the scroll is in the hand of the one who is worthy to open that scroll. The future of humanity is in the safe hands of the Messiah, the safe hands of the Redeemer. That is so amazing. The future of humanity has been restored, has been protected, and the plan of the Father will be fulfilled now. I want to conclude by looking at the seven virtues of the one who is worthy. If you look at verse 11 and 12, and especially verse 12, it says, worthy is the lamb who was slain. See, they're singing to the lamb of God. And notice the seven virtues that they declare. He is worthy to receive power. Number one. Number two, wealth. Number three, wisdom. Number four, might. Number five, honor. Number six, glory. And number seven, blessing. The virtues of Christ forever and ever. And the wonderful aspect is that his virtues have been made available to his bride. The church, the resurrected Christ has made available those exact virtues even for his church. And I believe even for today, by his spirit, he has made it available. If you read Ephesians 1, we see where Paul says, we are being blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Notice that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So as Christ received, as Christ was bestowed, and as he was deemed worthy to be full of power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. He says, this is also for my church. This is also for my bride, whom I will live forever and ever. So we thank God that our God is the Lion of Judah, but he is also the Lamb of God. As John the Baptist declared when he saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world.